Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium. Welcome. Tonight I am doing a collection video, BOA collection video to be specific, per request by Mr. Frankie Cato. Now I don't have a ton of BOAs, but they're kind of all over the place right now. I've got some girls in breeding, some babies. This is going to take a little bit. Uh, my girls that are in breeding, I'm just going to leave in the tubs and some of the tubs might even look a little lived in and that's because when you're breeding snakes, it's kind of a primitive process and you really don't want to go poking about and harassing them the way we normally would a little an animal that's going to be on camera. Forgive any mess that you might see because that's part of nature. Nature is messy. So without further ado, let's get started. This is a Kenyan sand boa. This one is brighter than your typical standard, so she might be a flame, although she's not as bright as your typical flame, so there's no telling. And again, these girls are live bearers, which makes them pretty freaking awesome. This is a very small species of boa. They do live almost completely submerged in sand. Some people do not think it's a good idea to keep them on sand in captivity. However, I do. Mine have had great success on sand. If ever I have one that starts looking ill, sometimes I will put them on a different substrate because individual animals vary. Maybe one has different needs for some reason. I think they're really happy in sand. They like to stay underneath the sand and they tend to shed well, eat well, and reproduce well for me on playground sand. I've never had a sand boa struggle with impaction. It's worked for me. This is my male motley het albino and he did uh, sire one of my clutches from last summer. He's proven out. This is my young male Bolivian boa that I am raising up to pair with my big beautiful female. And he is a handsome devil. Cannot wait for him to grow up and hopefully make me some baby Bolivians with that large female. This is my female Bolivian boa. She's pretty, pretty nippy. One thing I love about these is that they're not very common for one, but that they're really beautiful. They're a lot more gunmetal gray. And then you can see their quote red tails are like a super deep kind of a burgundy rather than the bright red. So these are also known as a long tail boa because uh, rather than being boa constrictor constrictor or boa constrictor imperator, this is a boa constrictor longicata. Pretty unique. This is one of my baby sun glow boas that I reproduced. So a sun glow is a salmon albino and it just really kicks up those bright colors a notch. And my favorite thing about this snake is her super beautiful colors. This is one of my salmon babies. So this and an albino together makes this. And if you don't know much about boa genetics, the salmon boa is just a hypomelanistic boa, which just kind of turns up the red pigments. This is a baby albino boa. So you can see how this and this, these genes, do make the sun glow. And again, if you're into boa genetics, this is the call albino strain. This is a Guyanan boa. And so this is a classic example of a true red tailed boa, boa constrictor constrictor. You can see the beige and reds and browns and then that tail is really bright red versus that dark burgundy red that you would see in um, an Imperator. This is one of my female Guyanan boas. And so this is a boa constrictor constrictor, BCC. True red tailed boa constrictor. 
and um, she looks a little darker now than she normally does and so I would presume that she is getting ready to go blue. This female is another one of my breeder boas. Hi sweetheart. So she is a boa constrictor imperator. She's a visual normal but she is het coral albino. She is one of my mamas as well. She's quite lovely. This is one of my female salmons, and uh, she's a pretty big girl. She's already been bred with the albino, and she's looking pretty beefy right now. Of course, my favorite thing about boas is that they are live bearers. So when you see a big, heavy female, it's always exciting because you know that she might be incubating those eggs right inside of her. This is a baby paradigm boa, which is another morph that is created from the sharp albino and the caramel hypo, not a caramel albino. This is a blood boa. So this is a genetic morph that was line bred for this rusty red color which is super duper pretty and not very common. So this is a hog island boa. So they are a dwarf boa constrictor imperator from the island of uh, the hog island or a very small area in Honduras. Shout out to all my Honduran ladies. Maria, I see you. Obviously this is a hypo. They are a different color from your typical boa constrictor imperator. A little smaller in adulthood, up to a foot or two smaller than your typical imperator, and absolutely beautiful. This is my albino male and my het albino female. They can be a little nippy because they're not really handled regularly, but I love them. This is one of my newest Boid acquisitions, thanks to Todd Tindall out of Carlsbad, New Mexico. And so this is an Egyptian sand boa. Interestingly, although these resemble the Kenyan sand boas, they are egg layers versus live bearers. And again, they do live in the sand in the wild, and so I do keep mine on sand. And they seem to be pretty happy that way. So this animal has been thriving. Some people think that they're really strange because uh, they don't have an easily distinguishable tail, as you can see. The tops and bottom, uh, again, they don't have a very distinct head. So they kind of just look like a worm or something with little beady eyes on the front of their faces. Some people have compared them to that monster Tremors from the Tremors movie back in the early 90s probably. And um, I just think they're really beautiful and awesome. They feel neat to the touch and they're interesting to watch. I want to give a special thanks to Frankie Cato for suggesting that I do a boa video. This is not all of my boa boas, but this is the highlight of my boa collection. And Zilla, as always, for providing my tech. And tongs.com for sending me the tools that I need to handle some of my nippier or venomous snakes. So if ever you need tongs or grabbers or a venom lock or any of those amazing tools, definitely go to tongs.com to get your supplies and of course look for Zilla in your local pet stores for the best equipment out there. Hope you guys like this one. Comment below what your favorite boa is and I'll see you guys soon.